and welcome to our video where we'll be showing you how to get ready for your remote session exam day. We'll look at the steps you should take before exam day, including making sure you pass the mandatory system test and checking that your equipment and connectivity meets all the technical requirements to run the exam successfully. We'll also look at how to set up your room and desk to ensure it meets the exam rules and regulations. Then we'll let you know what to expect on exam day itself, during the check-in process and within the exam environment. Finally, we'll let you know what your options are if you face any unexpected technical issues. Passing the mandatory system test is something all students must do ahead of checking in for their exam. This test will give you an indication as to the suitability of your device and connectivity to run the exam successfully. So when taking the test, it's important to use the same device and location you plan to use on exam day. Passing the mandatory system test ahead of your exam will also mean you will be eligible for all of our post-exam options. Your last attempt is used for eligibility purposes, so if you've performed the test multiple times, you must make sure your last test result is a pass if you wish to be eligible for these options. To take the system test, simply go to Exam Planner and select the Run System Test button. Passing the system test does not guarantee that your equipment and connectivity setup will run the exam successfully. It is therefore important to perform three other checks. Firstly, make sure that your device meets the minimum technical requirements by using the Online Technical Requirements Checklist tool on our website. This checklist details each of the requirements and how you can check your device against these. Secondly, you must have administrator access on your device as you'll be required to close down all other background applications running on your device during the check-in process. We therefore recommend using a personal device if possible, as employer-provided laptops and computers often have restrictions on the device and may use firewalls that can also interfere with the successful running of the exam. Finally, ensure you are using a reliable internet connection as you'll be required to be connected to the internet for the full duration of your exam. We recommend using a wired connection if possible and asking others in your household to reduce their internet use during your exam to minimize the risk of connectivity disruptions. Now let's look at your exam room setup. It's important to have the right environment so that you can perform at your best. Of course, you'll also be under exam conditions for the full duration of your exam and monitored by a remote invigilator throughout. So to help protect the integrity of the exam, we want to make sure you follow our room setup regulations. Here's a few key pointers to remember. You must take your exam in a closed private room. No other person is allowed to be in your room for the full duration of the exam. Let others in your household know not to come into the room, perhaps by placing a do not enter sign on the other side of the door. The room must have solid walls and door, i.e. these can't be glass or partitioned by a curtain. So this also means if you have windows where people may be visible outside, these may must also be closed over with blinds or a curtain, for example. You don't need any distractions, so make sure all other electrical equipment is also switched off. And of course, you can't have any books or visual aids lying around that could support you in your exam. The image you can see is taken from an infographic resource which is available on our remote session exam web pages. Access this resource to help you set up your room up appropriately. There's also specific rules and regulations about what is allowed on your exam desk. Full information can be found on our desk infographic resource, but let's look at some of the key information held within that. It's important to note that no scrap paper is allowed for remote session exams. Instead, you should use the scratch pad within the exam platform to make rough notes. You can only use one monitor. If you are using a laptop and would like to use a larger monitor, this is allowed, but you must have the laptop screen closed. You are allowed to have a glass or clear bottle of water on your exam desk, but no other food or drink is permitted. 
You cannot use external speakers or microphones, so ensure you are using your device's internal speaker and microphone. You do not need to have headphones, earbuds or earphones, and these are not permitted. Wearing of watches is not allowed, but don't worry, there is a timer within the exam environment which will guide you as to how long you have left to complete your exam. I mentioned earlier that you will not be allowed to use scrap paper in your remote session exam. Therefore, it's a good idea to practice using the scratch pad on the practice platform before taking your live exam. Remember, anything within the scratch pad is erased at the end of the exam, so make sure anything you want to be considered for marking goes in your answer responses. Videos which help to showcase how you can use the scratch pad can be found within our remote session exam web pages. Before starting your exam, you'll go through a check-in process. You'll be guided through the check-in process with simple on-screen instructions. But we'd still recommend that you watch our How to Check In video available on our website, as this will help familiarise yourself with the process. You can check in for your exam 30 minutes before your start time. To do so, you access Exam Planner and click the Launch Exam button, which will appear at midnight on the day before your exam in your plan. You won't be able to launch your exam 15 minutes after your exam start time, so make sure you're ready to check in 30 minutes before your exam, and most importantly, don't be late. During the check-in process, you will need to use your smartphone to send photos of your ID, desk and room setup when instructed to do so. Once you have completed these steps, you should place your phone out of arm's reach and on silent mode. Once the exam is started, you must not use your phone and taking photos of your screen is strictly prohibited under any circumstances. In almost all cases, if your invigilator needs to contact you, they will do so using the on-screen chat functionality. Only in exceptional circumstances may your invigilator attempt to contact you via your phone, and it is only in these circumstances that you will be permitted to use your phone once the exam is underway. I mentioned before that you will be guided to take photos of your room and desk setup as part of the check-in process to ensure your setup meets all the regulations. If for whatever reason your photos aren't taken correctly, this may delay the start of your exam. We have some useful do's and don'ts on how to take these photos, which are part of the desk and room infographic resource we showed you earlier. A key thing to remember is that your desk must be visible in all of the photos you take. For more support, Visit the infographic on our remote session exam web pages. You'll be under exam conditions as soon as you start the check-in process. So whilst you might be at home, imagine you're in an exam room and behave as you would in that environment. For example, whilst it might be tempting to talk aloud to yourself, this is not permitted. You'll be monitored by an invigilator throughout and they may interpret that you are trying to communicate with others during your exam, which is of course not allowed. This also means that other people are not allowed to be heard outside of your room talking, so it's best to ask others in your household to be aware of this before starting your exam. Additionally, you must remain seated and supervised for the full duration of the exam, even if you have finished working on your answers. So please do not leave the exam room or end the exam before your allotted exam time. Don't worry, once the exam time has concluded, your exam responses will automatically be sent to us. For full information on your expected behaviour during your exam, please refer to the rules and regulations, which are available on the website. You may wish to contact your invigilator during the exam. To start a chat with your invigilator, select the speech bubble which appears on top of your screen. When the invigilator becomes available, they will respond, but please remember, this may not be immediately. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, you should inform your invigilator so that this can be noted. However, 
please bear in mind that they are unlikely to be able to assist you with any equipment or connectivity related issues. The most common reason our students contact an invigilator is to take a bathroom break. Let's look at how you should inform your invigilator that you are taking your one permitted bathroom break. You are allowed to take one bathroom break of up to five minutes during the exam. Before doing so, you should advise the invigilator using the chat function that you are leaving your desk to use the bathroom. You do not need to wait for their response before leaving your desk. The exam timer will continue to run during a bathroom break and on returning to your desk, you should use the chat function to let the invigilator know that you have returned. For exam integrity reasons, if you exceed the five minute time limit permitted, this may result in your exam being terminated. The vast majority of students who take a remote session exam have a successful exam experience. However, when dealing with technology and internet connectivity, we understand that unforeseen issues can arise, which may disrupt your exam experience. That's why we offer students who pass our mandatory system test the opportunity to use all of our post-exam options if they experience technical issues. To minimise the risk of technical issues impacting your exam day, make sure you complete your equipment and connectivity checks we covered earlier. We also have some troubleshooting resources on our remote session web pages, which we'd encourage you to view before your exam day. Let's now look at what your post-exam options are. Any student who has attempted to check in for their exam and subsequently experienced a technical issue which has impacted their ability to complete their exam is able to rebook their exam into our contingency week, subject to the exam's availability. Alternatively, students can withdraw their exam and receive an exam credit if their last mandatory system test during the session was a pass ahead of checking in for their exam. The mandatory system test must be taken ahead of each exam session, so please ensure your last attempt is a pass and done so within the session's mandatory system test eligibility window. To use our post-exam option, you do so via Exam Planner. The option to rebook your exam will appear following your exam, whilst the option to withdraw your exam will only appear when any rebooking opportunity has subsequently passed. The option to withdraw your exam will be available until the withdrawal deadline. When using our post-exam options, you will be required to state the nature of the technical issue you faced so that we can investigate these further. It's important to add that misuse of our post-exam options, i.e. used when there was no major technical issue experienced, is strictly prohibited and will be treated as student misconduct. Full information on our post-exam options can be found within our remote session exam web pages. We hope you now feel a bit better prepared for taking a remote session exam. To access more information, including all the resources we've mentioned in this video, please visit www.accglobal.com forward slash remote ready. Best of luck for your exam day.